Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm talking about Mylio Photos. It's an app I've been using for over a year now, but I've been kind of refining how I'm using it and doing more and more with it. I'm starting to use it uh, more actively, I guess. And, uh, you know, it does things for me that I'm just not really able to do in other places. And so what I wanted to do in this video is kind of walk through how I'm using it, but perhaps more importantly, why I'm using it the way that I am. And so the thing about Mylio is it's essentially like a global operating system for all your photos, all your apps, all your devices, even the cloud, all that kind of stuff. It basically gives you a single pane of glass visibility to every photo you've ever taken. And the cool thing is, you can leave them where they are. You leave your file structure the way it is. You don't even have to move your photos. You basically just point Mylio to like your vault drive. You set up a vault and that's kind of what I've done. And so I've now got every photo I've ever taken visible by Mylio, which means I have easy access to find, you know, it's a great discovery tool. I can just get in and find photos and edit photos in other apps quickly and easily and keep track of that all in one place, which is Mylio. Let me show you. Um, if you're not familiar with Mylio, I did a video like maybe nine or 12 months ago about it. I'll put a link to it there, but uh, there's multiple tabs and I'm not going to cover everything. There's just honestly so much about Mylio. I could never cover it all, but um, I'm on the all photos tabs. So you can see up here, there's like some diamond beat. This is Iceland because it's showing all photos in reverse chrono uh, chronological order. So most recent uh, at the top. And as I scroll down, you can see the Aurora that I shot in Iceland. Uh, here's Vesterhorn where I took a bunch of photos and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's all photos. There's a calendar uh, section as well. You can just kind of see here, it organizes kind of in this uh, view, a uh, decade at a time. And of course you can double click into 2023 and see different months and that sort of thing about, you know, when you've taken photos, like here's January of 2023, February, March, April, right? These are all going back different years. As I start to scroll, you can see the year kind of showing up there. So you got a lot of great visibility. You've got a map as well. So you can just take a look here and you know, all you gotta do is geotag your photos and I haven't done all of them because as you saw, I have like 300 and something thousand photos that Mylio is looking at, but you can see all over Europe, I've got some geotags and then of course around the US and things like that. There's people as well as albums, which you can set up. But for me, the big thing is folders and my folders is what's caused me to end up with a solution uh, of Mylio. In the past, what I had was multiple drives in multiple places at different catalogs and libraries across multiple apps. Honestly, it was hard to keep track of, and I uh, admittedly didn't do a particularly great job. But with Mylio, I've got the ability to see everything from one place, which I absolutely love. Now, I've got an editing uh, external drive. It's an 18 terabyte drive, and you can see right down here, it says 18 terabyte main. That's my main drive, my editing drive. And um, I've got that drive connected, and then all these photos here are on that drive, and I've connected these individual folders that are on that drive to Mylio. So my main photo editing one is this photos folder right here. Uh, I also wanna point out there's this Mylio inbox. We'll get to that in a minute, but with photos, you can see I've got different photo uh, folders like Europe where I click in and then these are all the different trips to Europe I've had over the years. And one of the cool things is you can see up here, there's 101,460 photos from Europe starting in January of 09 and going through November of 2022. And that's comprised of 80 different folders. So that's kind of what that stuff means. But uh, you know, I've got a lot in Austin. I've got a bunch around the US where I've traveled and that sort of thing. So again, it's giving me a global consolidated view of everything, which I haven't really had before. And the reason I haven't had that before is not just because I've had uh, different folders on different drives, which is not a great idea, but also I've had different catalog uh, implementations, if you will, inside different apps. I mean, I've got a Lightroom catalog, I've got a Luminar catalog, I've got an on one catalog. And what I'm able to do with Mylio is get a, I'm gonna use the word layer, and I don't mean like in Photoshop or another app, but a, a layer um, on top of every one of those things, basically looking down, it's an umbrella, for lack of a better word, that's covering everything below it. And it gives me incredible visibility. So I wanna kind of show you how that's working because um, I've got this 
Anguilla folder here. That was a trip we took a few years ago, and I got a bunch of photos in it. But what I like to do, and what I found that I've done over the last few years, really, is I spend most of my time with Luminar, and secondly, with On One, two apps I love the most, and I use the most, and of course, make the most videos about. And consequently, that's why I have a catalog in each one. But that's inefficient because I never had a consolidated view until now. And now I can edit photos, start in Mylio, go to either one of those apps and bring it back to Mylio and have that full visibility and full round trip capability so that in one place in Mylio, I can see every one of those edits regardless of which app I did the edit in. So it's a huge benefit and time saver, frankly, not to mention the fact, I mean, there's a lot about Mylio. I can get smart previews. On, uh, on my iPhone. So I recently traveled and I was visiting my mother out of town and I was telling her about some old photos. Well, I just brought up my iPhone and I can look up the previews and show her pictures of her granddaughter from 10 or 15 years ago that she hasn't seen in 10 or 15 years and remind her of these old visits or whatever that we had together. So there's lots of things that you can do. Super cool. But what I want to do is let's say I want to do an edit. I've got a photo here. And if you just look, uh, it's uh, DSC 02824. It's a Sony RAW file. I want to edit this in Luminar, let's say. So I just go up to Photo, and you can say Open With, and you can see all these different apps. I have a lot of apps. It's a problem. But there's two that I use primarily, Luminar Neo and On One Photo Raw 2023. I'm going to go ahead and open this photo in Luminar Neo. I have an edit uh, original, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the raw file. Or if I make adjustments in Mylio first, because you can also do edits in Mylio, I could then send it over with those adjustments. But I don't want to do that. I want to do my raw file uh, in Luminar. So that's going to open Luminar. And I'm going to full screen that. It opens to the preset tab. I'm going to go straight to edit. And what I want to do is I'm just going to do something basic. This is not like a full, you know, hey, amazing workflow kind of thing. I'm just going to... Uh, do a couple of quick things here on this photo just to kind of get the tones and, and whatnot looking kind of the way I want them to look. So maybe something like that would develop raw. Maybe I'll do a little super contrast because I like it so much and it's it's just a, an amazing tool here in Luminar Neo. So maybe something about like that. Let me, yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, and then maybe I'll go in and just get a little golden hour, give that a little pop of warmth. Let's say something like that. I do see the spot. I'm not going to remove the spot, although it's quick and easy. But when I'm finished with my raw file, doing all my edits, and let's say that's what I want it to look like, all I do in Luminar is I click up here and I click on Share to Disk. Once I do that, a menu pops up, of course, and there's a drop down and choose Mylio Inbox. Remember, I pointed out the inbox earlier. Choose Mylio Inbox, pick your settings. I want to save it as a TIFF. Pro Photo, all this kind of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and add an extension and I'm going to say Edit Luminar so that I know that this photo was edited in Luminar. I'm going to go ahead and click Save and it's going to do an export. And what it does, it exports that TIFF from Luminar and it sticks it in that folder called Mylio Inbox. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close Luminar. And what I want to do is go back here to my main folder, and you can see my Mylio inbox now has a two. There was one before. If I double click, there's my photo. That's the edit I just did. If I click on it, you can see over here, it's an edit, it's a TIFF. It's got that edit-luminar that I just did, and I want to put it back in that same folder. So I just right click and move to folder, and then I just got to go find the folder, which is under Mylio, or excuse me, under photos and Anguilla, and I quick select and it's gone. And so if I back out of here and go back into photos and go back into Anguilla and I just scroll down and here is my photo that I just edited. You can see the name right there. So that's pretty cool. But there's another thing that's pretty cool as well. Remember, I closed Luminar. Well, let me just reopen Luminar real quick because what happens if I get back here and I think, oh yeah, but that photo, oh, you know what? I don't want to re-edit. I want to change a little something. Well, you can go back into, as long as you have your drive connected, these show up in single image edits. And there it is. And I can just go into edit. And if you click on the edits tab, that's all the stuff that I just did to it. So as long as you still have the drive connected, you're still able to reopen Luminar and go find that photo and uh, refine your edit if you want or need to. 
Now, the other thing I wanna do is also, let's say I wanna do the same photo, but I wanna use on one. Maybe I wanna compare the two, which I'm not really doing, but let's just say that I wanted to use on one. I'll use the same photo. So once again, photo, open with, and I'm gonna to go to on one photo raw 2023. I'm gonna edit original and click continue. That way I send my raw file to on one. And a few seconds later, here's my raw file in on one. If I click on info, you can see that this is a raw file right there. It's that 2824, the same file, of course. I'll click AI auto. Hey, kind of like it. I want to bring up the highlights a little bit, maybe a little bit of the shadows, maybe uh, cool it off, maybe give it a little tint, maybe enhance the vibrance a little bit. I'm kind of making it up. I don't really have an edit plan here. Maybe I go to effects and maybe I go to color balance and maybe I just want to add a little something in the highlights, maybe a little bit of warmth in the highlights. I don't know. Again, just kind of playing around. I don't have an edit plan here, but that's my photo and I've now made an edit in on one. Here's the thing. I can actually save it back actually a little bit more quickly than I did in Illuminar. You just come down here to the bottom and you say done and it says saves all edits performed and it leaves edits. So I'm going to say done. Well, I get this dialog box and it'll automatically save. I've selected TIFF as my file format. It's defaulting to the folder that the photo came from. So this is going to be edit on one. There we go. And I'm going to hit save. And now it's finished with that photo and it's dropped it back. I'm going to just close on one because I don't need it any longer and I had to find the photo, but here it is. It's not lining up next to the original. I need to figure that part out, but you can see here the same DSC 02824-edit-on1, and it's a TIFF, and there it is. And once again, I closed the on1 app, but if I were to reopen it, and I'm on my 18 terabyte external drive, and I clicked in that folder, and here's my Luminar edit, right? Uh, now I can't refine the Luminar components of that, but I have the photo because it's a TIFF, and I saved it back to the original folder, which Coincidentally, the on one uh, catalog is also a browser. So I see that here's my on one edit, which has those basic edits from on one baked in, but also here's my raw file in on one. So if I click on the edit tab at my raw file, you can see it's containing the edits. It's the same. And you come over here and these were all the edits that I made. So again, as long as I'm connected, it's got the color balance. It's got the stuff that I did in develop. All that stuff is still there. So in either case, I have the TIFF that I've essentially exported, saved uh, onto my hard drive, on my external drive, so I can always have that. But also, if the drive is connected and I open the app, I can go into the specific app and find that edit and pick up where I left off if I need to. So I think all that stuff is pretty cool. And one other thing that I really like about Mylio is this dashboard component. If you come in here and look at devices, for example, Again, here's my main folder or my main external drive. I've got five folders from it connected and that sort of thing. But one of the things I like a lot, and I kind of like analytics, it's not something I spend a lot of time on, but it's interesting uh, and uh, educational, frankly, in terms of things, in terms of what you're shooting and that sort of thing. But if you click on library stats, you can uh, geotag things, so places, right? And you'll see here a heat map. Most of my uh, photos, in fact, all of my photos really, except for a little bit in Sydney, Australia, have been in the US or in Europe and Iceland. If you, uh, I mean, a little bit down in the Caribbean and in Mexico, but not a lot. Uh, file types, you can see I've got 327,000 photos. And you can see here the ARWs, those are Sony RAW files, NEF is Nikon, etc. You can kind of see that, so it gives you a nice idea about what's going on. But you click on cameras, you can see the different cameras that have been used over time, broken out by brand and model. So I've had several Sony and Nikon cameras. Um, all my iPhone photos, and here's another thing that I really like, and that is, uh, in fact, let me pop back over here to my folders, and let me go back to the folder view. And if you look here, I've got an Apple Photos folder. You can connect Apple Photos, and then everything that's in Apple Photos is also here in uh, Visible by Mylio. And you have to connect that. But what I use Apple Photos for is kind of a dumping ground for all my iPhone shots. And one of the challenges I've had over the years is I remember I'm like, ah, I took an iPhone shot and, you know, da, da, da. And I don't know what iPhone it's on or what hard drive it's on because I've had iPhone, um, like when I'm upgrading from one iPhone to a new one, just dump them from the iPhone onto an external hard drive just to have them. They were never organized or categorized. And what I've done is I've gone in 
and I've got photo archives here, which is on my ter uh, external drive. I've got lots of those iPhone photos, and then I've got other ones here in Apple Photos, not to mention also here in my main photo editing, I've got miscellaneous photos, and uh, here's another 50,000 iPhone photos from 2008 to 2016. So again, it's giving me the ability to go in and get visibility and basically find uh, all these old iPhone shots that I've had over the years that have just been sitting on all these other miscellaneous hard drives. I got everything on a one hard drive and now with Milio, I have complete visibility across all of it. So I love that. And so that's what all these different iPhone uh, or Apple you know, cameras are. They're all the different iPhones that uh, me and other members of the family have had over the years. Um, and then also lenses. This is a great way to really better understand what you're using or perhaps not using in case you need to maybe do some rationalization, let's call it, right? If you're cleaning out and saying, to really use that, maybe I don't need that anymore. It gives you an idea as to what you're shooting with uh, the most, right? So I might come down here and say, golly, this 24 mil 2.8, I thought I loved that lens. I've only taken 962 photos. Maybe I, maybe I don't use that lens as much as I thought I did. Maybe it's because I have a 24 of another type that has you know a different aperture. Now, here it is, a 24 1.4. By the way, did you just notice I clicked on it and it takes me to all the different photos I've taken with that specific lens. And so, you know, again, you can clear that search and go back to this. But the point is, it's a great tool for better understanding kind of what you're shooting and what you're shooting with. And if you need to do some rationalization, which is a, a nice way of saying if you need to get rid of some stuff, you can figure out, hey, am I using any of these things? And if not, maybe I could stand apart with it because I'm not using it as much. Also, there's keywords. Like I said, I can never cover in this video everything that's going on within Milo because it is massive. And to be clear, I have not keyworded everything that I need to keyword, but this is something that I think comes in, again, super handy for search and discovery, which is really, for me, what Milo is all about. It's a great search and discovery tool. It's a great visibility tool. It gives you the option and the opportunity, really, to find things that maybe you didn't know you had, to relive some experiences, and just to get a better handle on all your assets, regardless of where they are. They can be in the cloud, they can be in different apps, they can be in different hard drives, they can be on different devices. You can connect all of that, doesn't matter if it's a Windows or iOS or Android. It honestly just does so much. It is like a supercharged, super digital asset manager, like a super dam that lays on top of everything else that you've done and gives you complete visibility and control. And that's how I'm using it and why I'm using it because I was super fragmented in my workflow and it was obviously uh, and frankly becoming incredibly unwieldy. And now with Milio sitting on top of all of it, I feel like I've got great visibility and control that I didn't really have in the past. So that's how it's working for me. I'd love to know how you're using Milio and if not, there is a link down below, of course, where you can check it out. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care, and until then, adios.